What's up guys, Theros Kazin here. In this video, we're going to talk about design patterns in React. I'm going to show you some design patterns that are senior level that you can implement today to easily write efficient and scalable React applications. All right, cool. So we're now on my computer screen and we can begin. As usual, I have here a very simple application that I'm going to use to teach you about design patterns in React. So what we're currently looking at is we have this homepage right here, and then we have a list of posts. Everything is kept super simple on purpose. So the post literally only has a title and then some content that comes from our favorite Lorem Ipsum. This is the code that's rendering this homepage. And this is also the first design pattern. It's called the single responsibility principle. And it essentially means that whenever you're creating your components in React, you should always create your components with the idea that every single component will only ever be responsible for one thing and then will delegate everything else to other components. So in the context of our homepage right here, this this means that this home page should only be responsible for one thing. So what is that thing? Well, we have a helpful comment here that tells us exactly. It's responsible for rendering the home page and its components. This means that the only code that we should have in this home page is the code that allows us to render the home page and render the subcomponents that make up the home page. For example, it's responsible for the post state. If you see here, we have a piece of state called post, which yes, for now is static. There's actually no fetching going on. This dummy post here that we're using to initialize the state is just a static list of posts. There's nothing special to it, but nonetheless, it goes in a piece of state and then the home page becomes responsible for that piece of state. At the same time, we have here this use effect that would, in theory, if this was a real application, actually fetch some data, the home page should also be responsible for the code that goes and updates this piece of state. So whether you're fetching data using use effect here, or if you're using React Query or any other library, the code that is going to fetch the data and that is going to update the state should also be the responsibility of the home page. This is the same as if you had any filters or search in this component, they would also go here because you would use those filters, those values, those states to then update the actual posts that are being rendered in this component. But then at the same time, the home page is not actually responsible for rendering its own posts. As you can see here, it passes the post state to the post feed component. If you look here at the bottom, we have this post feed component component that receives the posts from the state in the home page, and it's responsible for actually doing all the rendering. This is great because the home page can then focus on just handling the piece of state of post and then handling all the code that fetches the post and then delegates the actual rendering of those posts to the post feed. If we then go and look at the post feed and just open it up, this one also has its own responsibility. It's responsible for taking a list of posts and rendering them as postcards. So this post feed doesn't actually even render each individual post. It just takes the post, uses them here, and then maps over them and renders the postcard component. And then of course, if we open the postcard component, we go to it, this one also has a responsibility and it's responsible for rendering a single post. So it'll take a post as props and then we'll just render out some UI to render the actual post. We have the title here and then we have the content, but notice that there's no fetching going on. There's no manipulation of the post going on. This is a simple component that just receives the post and renders it, which means that you could literally plug this component anywhere in your React application. As long as you give it a post, it'll know to render properly and everything will work exactly as you expect. That is the concept of the single responsibility principle. So remember, whenever you're building a component in React, you always want to make sure that it's only responsible for one thing, and then it delegates everything else to other components. All right, cool. Now let's talk about the second design pattern in React, which is page components, feature components, and UI components. And for this one, we're going to have to set up just a little bit of code. And to do that, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to use the first ever sponsor of Cosin Solutions. That's right. This video is sponsored and it's sponsored by a company called Mighty Melt. So before I show you how Mighty Melt works, let's take a look at these components right here. I have this file, it's called prefabs. This is going to be important. And essentially I have three components here, email input row, password input row, and sign in button row that essentially will help me build my sign in form. 
Then what I can do is I can go to my terminal and in the root of my project directory, I can do npx mightymelt. And this is going to run the mightymelt software. And this is what it looks like. Essentially, mightymelt is a visual way to work with your React applications. This is my current application right now and there's nothing to it because we now have to build our own sign-in form. So what I can do is I can click anywhere on this little screen here and here I get to see exactly the components that are making up the screen. I can double click into the sign-in form and then over here at the left, I have the prefabs that I showed you earlier. I can take any of these prefabs, I can just drag and drop them and they automatically appear here in my actual application. I can do the same with the password input row and then with the sign in button row and now we have successfully built our sign in form. Then the really cool feature is that I can click on any of these components here and I can just right click and do open an editor and this is going to open the editor to the actual sign in form component and also to the line that specifically has this text input. You can see here we have it for email, for password and of course our button as well. Now these prefabs, obviously I've built them myself using my own components from my own app, but you can also do this for any UI library, Material UI, Chakra UI, and actually MightyMelt has already implemented that for those libraries so that you don't have to do it yourself. What's really cool about MightyMelt is the fact that you can visually edit your React components. You have all of the props here, you can make any edits that you want, and you can also do it with AI. You can write the prompt and the updates are going to happen magically. And then once you're done, you can come here at the top right and you can see a clean diff of everything that you've done. These are all the changes that we made and these are exactly the same changes that we would have had if we were to have made the changes in our editor. If you want to check it out, you can go to mightymelt.com. It is currently in private beta, but don't worry, you can use my code COSDEN to access the private beta for free and use it as much as you want. Thank you once again to Mighty Melt for sponsoring this video. And now that we have our sign-in form set up, we can now continue and talk about the second design pattern in React. All right, cool. So now let's talk about the second design pattern in React. And we're actually going to use the sign-in form that we just built using Mighty Melt. Remember, the second design pattern is page components, feature components, and UI components. This sign-in form is a feature component. And the reason why it's a feature component is because it handles a feature. It does something, it handles the signing in. It handles the user being able to sign into your application, and that is a feature, which means that all of the code that is related to signing a user in should go in this component and should be the responsibility of this component. So for example, since this is a sign-in form, we would have a form, we have inputs, we have buttons, we need some sort of validation. And again, this doesn't matter if you use Yup or Zot or whatever else validation, if you do it yourself, the code that you have to validate the form should be the responsibility of the sign-in form because it's a feature component and this is part of its feature. The same thing applies for your handle submit function, right? Again, doesn't matter what form library that you use, you are going to have a function that will submit some data. That function should be responsible of the sign-in form because once again, it is a feature component. Now, feature components are almost always made up of smaller UI components, like this card here, this text input. If I open up the card here, you're gonna see that there's nothing going on here besides actually rendering a diff which has the styles of a card. There's no logic, there's no state, there's no effects, there's no hooks. This is a pure UI component that doesn't do anything else besides render some HTML elements. And then besides UI components and feature components, we also have page components. So if I go here to sign in page, this is a page component and this is very similar to the home page component that we've already seen. All of the code for this page, for example, fetching some data, right? Who knows what we might have to fetch in the sign in page component. Maybe we want to fetch and make sure that the user is not currently signed in. Otherwise, if they are, we want to redirect them. That code would go in this use effect here and it's part of the sign in page component. Also, if you work with React in the real world, oftentimes you will have to send analytics event on page views. That code would also go in the sign in page component because that is the responsibility of the page and not the sign in form. The sign in form is only responsible for handling the form that actually signs the user in. Now let's talk about another design pattern that is also super important in React and that is the concept of compound components. If you look here on the screen, we have this select component and then we have select.option that goes inside of the select component. If I now go to my application and see what this looks like, we have a fully working select component. I can select the value and this value is displayed in 
this component. Let's now look at the code for this select component. So I'll just go to definition here. And at first this might seem intimidating, but don't worry, this is actually super simple. And it's just making use of the context API in React, which by the way, if you're unfamiliar with context, I do have a whole video on that if you want to get yourself up to speed. Essentially what this file does is it just creates a context here with these lines of code. We have our select context here. It takes in an active option, which is the current option that is currently displayed. In this case here was option two. You can change this to any option. This is the current active option. And then of course you have a function to set this active option, right? It takes in a key of type string and then we'll just set the option. Then right below we have the actual select component, which is this piece of code right here. And again, this just takes in a class name and some children, has a piece of state for the active option, and then is responsible for creating the context. We'll then pass the active option and the set active option function to the context. And then we'll simply render the HTML select input. Then if you scroll a little bit just at the bottom, we have our option component. This is this piece of code here. Again, this is really, really simple. It just accesses the context using this custom hook called use select context. We'll look at this in just a moment. And then based off the active option, we'll just render some class names here and then renders out the actual HTML option element, which on click will set the active option to the current option selected. The magic ingredient is this use select context right here. If I go to its definition, it's defined right here at the bottom. And this is a simple hook that just tries to get the context of select context. And if it's not available, we'll just throw an error. If it is available, it's just going to return the context directly. This means that you can go here in this option, you can use this hook. And then only if this option is below a select context, will you get access to active option and set at the option. If not, you're just going to get an error. And this is not going to work directly. And then the last piece of magic is over here on line 53. And that is where we're doing select dot option is equal to option. So essentially, we're making it easier to use this option component by just importing select and assigning this option component to select dot option, which means that in our app, we can just do select and then select dot option. This is how this component works. And this is what we call a compound component. The beauty of doing it this way is now you've locked this option component to only ever be used under a select component, which means that you never have to worry about this option component being used anywhere else and having to configure it to fit that use case. You can design this specifically to work with this component, the select component, and you can enforce this by the context here that we're trying to fetch and it's going to throw an error if not. And you can also make it easier to do so by just assigning it to select that option. If I was to come here, for example, and remove the select and just keep all of the options and press save and then go back to my actual application, you're going to see that nothing is rendered on the screen. If I open up my console, we have this error here that says error use select context should only be used within the scope of a select component. So doing it this way, using react context, you've made sure you've enforced that this option component can only ever be used of the select component. And you've now successfully created a compound component, a component that is made up of sub components that all are designed to work together. And this is a great design pattern to use in react, because it allows you to design some really, really cool components. And finally, I'm going to show you one last design pattern that's a little bit more senior. But trust me, you want to use this because it's going to make your components a lot simpler and easier to work with. And that is the pattern of extracting things into hooks, even if they're not reusable. So for example, we're back in our sign in page, and we have all of this code here. What I usually like to do with this is I like to come here to my file navigator, create a new file call this sign in page dot hooks, if I can type again, new keyboard dot TS, press enter. And then here I'm going to define a custom hook. I'm going to do export const use sign in page. That is going to be equal to not with router, just the sign in page directly. That is going to be equal to this. And for now, it's going to take an empty object. And then what I'm going to do is take all of this code here and just move it over to the custom hook. So do here, do here, and then import use effect. And now go back to my sign in page and then just do use sign in page, import this correctly, remove the import to use effect. And now we have the same functionality, but we've extracted all of the hooks, all of the logic into its own custom hook. And the benefits of doing this is that now if you look, the sign in page is only responsible for rendering the actual UI that makes up its own content, it doesn't have anything to do with all of the code to make that logic happen. All of that code is extracted in a custom hook in a different file, 
which makes this much easier to work with. And this becomes really valuable as your application grows because then you make your components be really, really small. They're less intimidating to work with and everything is in its own file and it's kind of isolated from the rest. So there you go, guys. That was a video on design patterns in React. I really hope that this was valuable to you and I really hope that now you can use some of these in React applications and become one step closer to being a senior React developer. If you enjoyed this video, as always, you can click here to subscribe. It would really mean the world to me. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that is super, super awesome. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Ciao, ciao.